While half of the NBA's opening round is done, the other half is having a ton of trouble getting past one another. And is the window for a ring on the other side of Los Angeles quickly closing? These two discuss that and much more, so get ready, because the power play starts and ends right now. Welcome to the final power play. As always, I am your sexually attractive host, Pat Gunther, here alongside Taylor Curie and Jerry Joseph. Boys, how are we doing today? Doing great, man. I'm okay. Thanks good, for hosting. Man. All right, very nice. Of course, it's my pleasure, gentlemen. Well, guys, I'm glad to have you on deck one last time, so let's dive headfirst right into it with our first topic. Gentlemen, last night we witnessed yet another series tiebreaker for the San Antonio Spurs and the Los Angeles Clippers, who were defeated by a score of 111 to 107. Now, Blake Griffin and Chris Paul had another chance to come up big and help the Lakers' baby brothers get a victory, but they missed some clutch free throws down the stretch. That cost them dearly. So, yeah. starting with you, TC, how does this series look to you? And if San Antonio you know, takes a lead, does that mean that the Los Angeles Clippers' window for a ring is uh, quickly closing? Well, window for a ring is uh, maybe a little bit premature to talk about that. Let's just talk about this series, 2015. The NBA playoffs opening round of last year was Pretty unbelievable. I think a bunch of series went to Game 7s. This year it's been a little bit different. But the one series that has been exciting, every single game has been Los Angeles and San Antonio. It's 3-2 San Antonio, and each game has, has been like down to the wire other than the blowout that, with the Spurs. But I tell you what, all the momentum is now in the San Antonio court. But the momentum can change so, so quickly. Last, last game, the Clippers won in San Antonio. Now that San Antonio wins in L.A., it's been a crazy series to watch. I don't know who, who gets it. Well, J.J., what do you think? I think the Spurs do get it because the, okay. first, the ones that I'm going to throw at you that will, that will at least give you the specificity of the situation is they're 14-4 and in the Greg Popovich when it comes to elimination games. Okay. And not to mention that, I've seen the trend. Chris Paul has to score 30 points for them to win a game. That's not who he is. He lets you distribute the ball. And that being said, uh, they're not going to be able to stop that once again. Uh, that game four blowout, he only had like, he was 3 of 11 for shooting in the, on the floor. And I don't know if they're going to be able to step up on the pressure in that court. Right. They're down 3-2 to a Greg Popovich team. And we all thought, at least I did, thought they had it figured out. You know, they're, they blew them out 100-73. to yeah. Like, okay, this is it. It's game over. But the, I guess the appreciation I have for this series is it's a great coaching battle. Yeah. It's Doc Rivers. It's Greg Popovich. I love seeing the, 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 the back and forth of this series. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think the Clippers can win again in San Antonio. Yeah, they have to go to San Antonio. And just you, you, can we just appreciate Greg Popovich and what those Spurs the have done? Honestly. The maestro. But wait, he's wait, a, I, he's I, a basketball I, genius. I appreciate his, his interviews and post-game press conferences. Yeah. Oh, he's, a he, he, he's the most blunt person I've ever right. seen. And, J.J., like you said, man, they are the defending champs. So until someone knocks them off, man, they're, they're still top dog. Great answers, as can't, always, can't guys. <laughs> But it's time to move on to our next topic. We're going to take things over to Chi-Town, where the Bulls are going to face the Milwaukee Bucks in what could now be a pretty gripping series, yeah. depending on, on the results of tomorrow night's game. Now, the Bulls have pulled ahead 3-0 in the series, but the feisty young Bucks team has climbed <laughs> back into the thick of things. They've won the last two games, so JJ, you've got to tell me. Why do you think the series has taken such an unexpected turns? And if it goes to Game 7, can we expect the Milwaukee Bucks to get an upset? If it goes to Game 7, answer, to answer that question first, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to make NBA history. I think they're going to beat them. I'm not even going to lie to you. This is really? the first time I've seen a team down 3-0 that can come back and win a game come in on, 7. Jay. No, I'm what not about lying Derek to you. Derrick Rose and Pau What about and him? That crew? His first game, he went off. He, he had, he had a, about 30 points or so. His second game, he almost had a triple-double. The third game, they did win. But then well, they, they realized the Cavs swept someone and Kevin Love's out. They will never admit well, to it, but they're thinking about the next round already, and that's cost right. them. They had 21 right. turnovers in that game four loss. Yeah. They but, had but here's the thing. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Because I think that one game, they were looking ahead. I think, you know, they're probably kicking themselves in the back or whatever, and they realize we, we can beat the Bucks. okay? They're, they're looking ahead because they know they're a good team. I think the Bulls will figure it out, and they'll win the series. But you got to credit those young Bucks, man. I mean, Jason's kids got him playing. He does. He does. Michael, Michael Kidd. Uh, Michael, Carter Michael Carter Williams. Michael Carter Williams. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and what I will say, uh, a great defensive team they have in Milwaukee, and the Bulls' offense sort of hinges on Miritich and Gasol now. So, yeah. J.J., I'm with you. It is kind of interesting. But 
That is a great round of answers, as always. We have another topic, our final topic. Staying in the Eastern Conference, the number one seeded Atlanta Hawks find themselves tied in the series with Jay-Z's squad, the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> now, of course, Atlanta takes the two games before dropping two in a row, which I didn't honestly expect. So, TC, what do you think about this series? And if the Nets win game five, are we possibly looking at another 8-1 no. to one upset that we, no. like we had in 2011 with the Grizz? No, I wouldn't get too uh, crazy there, Pat, with that. But uh, I don't know, maybe Hove's like, giving them locker room speeches or something. I didn't give Brooklyn a chance Nor did I. in hell Not to, to win a game. I thought they were, I, but I don't know. That Eastern Conference is weird to figure out. They came in, they basically limped into the playoffs. They got a chance to play the number one team in the East. This tells me more about Atlanta than it does Brooklyn, don't you think? Like, to Atlanta was, was, had, had the best record in the East, and yes, they're, but, they're losing to Brooklyn. But two points on this statement. The first is it does say a lot about Atlanta because they, fit, they, they really did die down from that great January month they had. Right. And they, they just came back to, I guess what we've seen out of Atlanta, not last year or this year, but the, more of a couple years before that. Just they've been kind of middle of the pack. kind yeah, of. They've been a little bit middle of the pack, and they don't seem to have that instinct anymore. It just kind of dropped off for them. I think they can win. I think right. they'll be able to come back and win probably in six, maybe seven. It might go to seven. Yeah. But... I want to know what Lionel Holland is telling those players. Because they went into that series and he said, we don't have any advantage. That's why they're the number one. That's why we're the number eight. They're kind of playing like they have nothing to lose, which they do. That's true. They and don't I, expect them to be there. No, and that, that is a dangerous way to play just because that makes it someone just go all out. But I don't, know, I don't know what the Nets are going to do, be able to keep the Hawks from winning they, two out of the last three. The, and the, the, go ahead. The one, sorry, the one advantage the Nets have is they got a little bit of um, veteran Darren Williams, um, Joe Johnson. They, they got some guys that have been there and they haven't won a lot of playoff games that are probably... They haven't. But more, the only uh, way I can say they win this series is if Joe Johnson steps up. And he's had 20 points. He's flirted with 16 to 20 points throughout the series, but he's only been like 5 or 17, 6 or 17 Yeah, he really shooting. hasn't he had his best game yet. No, so. he hasn't. And, and oddly he, enough, we, we have seen Atlanta has been playing inside out all year. That's been their bread and butter. You know, kickouts, they get the ball down low, and Brooke Lopez is really starting to step up Brooke defensively. Brooke Lopez at least, is a very honestly. underrated player for them. Yeah, uh, but no. The, who, who, let me ask you, who's your Eastern Conference winner? You think Atlanta has a chance? No, or? they're not going to win. It's either going to be, it's, it's whoever wins that Chicago, hopefully Chicago Cavaliers series, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be Chicago at this point. Really? Atlanta, Atlanta can't do it, and I don't think Chicago can beat. The, let, Chicago can let lose. Let me give you a sleeper, JJ. Washington Wizards, my friend. John Wall. You know what? I won't lie to you. I do the John Wall if I could dance, but I can't. So I'll just say they have a chance there. Yeah, we'll do the John Wall. What I will say, though, JJ, you can never count out a team with LeBron James, man. And the Cavs are we're turning it on at the right time. I know Kevin Love is a huge blow to them. Yeah. But, like you said, Cleveland, Chicago, that is really going to draw in some ratings. So, JJ, TC, thanks for that, guys. That was our last topic for the show. But I believe you had a few last words for us. Is that correct, JJ? I did, man. I did. You're going to make me tear up. Yeah, I, I, come little, on, man. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> well, guys, it's been, it's been one hell of a ride this semester working with you guys here at Tiger TV. It was a great experience that I'm, I'll be forever grateful for to all of you who knew and worked with me this semester. This has just been a great learning experience, but also one that's helped me build friendships I know I wouldn't want to exit college without. A big thanks to our advisor, Miss Cindy Carter, for always motivating us to perform to the best of our abilities. And thanks to our station manager, Kristen. You gave me the opportunity to do a show I've wanted to do for a year and a half, and I can't thank you enough for that. Before I go, I just wanted to thank the entire sports staff here with sports director John Lombardi and the crew Derek Kopp, Cody Krupp, Brendan Hilliard, Amanda Lawson, Mitch Ravelet, Reggie Chapman, Shadil Reed, and my boys TC and Pat here at the desk. You guys have made this one hell of a semester, and I wish you all the best in your respective careers. So until then, guys, this is Jared Joseph signing off. Hey, man. It's been a real pleasure working with you. I tell you what, <laughs> you got me all emotional. Can we end the show with some Ray Lewis highlights? Just end the show with the Ray Lewis. You know what, JJ? I think it's only appropriate. Take the Ray Lewis highlights.